guys, welcome back to Hoffman Reproductions. Ben Hoffman here. And once again, I've gone into a time machine, and on today's episode, I've gone back to the year 1775, uh, to be specific, April 19th. Now, if you study American history, 1775, April 19th is when the Revolutionary War began. So the scenario is, late last night, the government forces, the Redcoats, if you will, uh, advanced on Lexington, intent on capturing a store of powder and weapons there. The local militia earlier in the day here met them and stood their ground and some fighting took place. So I and many other militiamen and Minutemen across the county uh, got word of that and I along with the other boys have headed out cross country to meet up with our comrades there with the intent of uh, pushing the British back to Boston. So with that in mind I thought it would be fun to equip and clothe myself as one of those soldiers or militia men would have been on that fateful day in April of 1775. And to do so I found an original journal where the equipment was recorded by a gentleman by the name of Arthur Harris. Now Arthur Harris was from Bridgewater, Massachusetts. He was a member of Captain Orr's Company of Minutemen and they were at that uh, engagement at Lexington and Concord in April of 1775. Now militia in the 18th century it generally you're required to be in it if you were age 16 to 60, so pretty much every, every able-bodied able man. And you were expected to furnish most of your own equipment and firearms and maintain it so that in the case of an emergency or declaration of war, you could be called up and at a moment's notice, as the name implies, Minuteman, go to whatever that uh, situation was. So each individual militia across the colonies, they had different standards, but um, it, it was, uh, you know, various weapons and accoutrements that they wanted to carry. Uh, this individuals of this particular company, Captain Orr's company of uh, Bridgewater, Massachusetts, this was what each soldier or militiaman was to carry and furnish. Each soldier was to, pride him, was to provide himself with a good fine arm, firearm, a steel or iron ramrod and spring for the same, a worm priming wire and brush, a bayonet fitted to his gun, a scabbard and belt therefore, a cutting sword, tomahawk or hatchet, a pouch or cartridge box that will hold 15 rounds and at least 100 buckshot, a jackknife and toe for wadding, six flints, one pound of powder, 40 balls fitted to the gun, a knapsack, a blanket, a canteen, or wood bottle to hold one quart. And I've got pretty much all of those things on my person right now. That was the basis for, uh, that I took to uh, give you an accurate picture of the equipment and the clothing that uh, the soldiers in that day would have had. So uh, my clothing that I have, I have what's called a Monmouth cap, just a simple knit wool cap that was uh, used by tradesmen and middle class individuals. I have a uh, necktie here or a cravat some people would call it that uh, men tended to wear in the 18th century. It's a lot like a modern necktie. I have a uh, linen red frock coat on, a black wool waistcoat, a linen shirt of the time period. I have uh, knee breeches on, fall front knee breeches, gray wool socks and colonial shoes with brass buckles. Um, as far as my equipment, again, I've got pretty much everything that was there on that list. And special emphasis on the fire lock that I have here today. This is one that I just finished up. It's uh, one of Jim Chambers' kits. And it is a New England Fowler. New England Fowlers were common in the time period of the American Revolution. And many of the Minutemen there at Lexington most likely carried weapons similar to this. There would have been some military, I'm sure, muskets mi mixed in there, 
old surplus guns, probably would have been a rifle or two, and there would have been a great many of these. As the name implies, Fowler was a civilian hunting weapon, primarily used for waterfowl, bird hunting, but could also be used for small game and mid-sized game, and indeed in time of warfare for fighting. Uh, they were stocked in maple, cherry, and walnut. This is maple, brass mounts, uh, early English round face lock. We've got an octagonal to round 44 inch barrel and it is a 12 gauge, roughly 70 caliber. It's stocked all the way to the muzzle and in that text you'll remember it stated that you had to have a bayonet fit to your gun because all of the guns were different. They couldn't just have a standard bayonet. So what I've got, since my muzzle is all the way to the end, is a vintage plug bayonet from the earlier period in the 18th century. Fits down the barrel and you can't fire it with it in there but it gives you an option if you have an unloaded weapon and the enemy are advancing. So before we get on to firing this particular smooth bore as we do in all of our videos we're going to mix it up a little today and do something just a little different instead of just uh, seeing how it fires at various ranges we're going to test what you might call anti-personnel rounds. In other words, uh, ammunition that was designed to inflict harm on the enemy. So we're going to shoot several different types. We're going to shoot a solid projectile and see what that does. Uh, buck and ball load and just a load of buckshot. So we'll uh, run the whole gamut as it were uh, and see uh, what kind of results we can get. So we're going to go ahead and head over to the firing range and uh, see what we can do when the uh, fire and smoke start. I'm going to go ahead and get loaded up and fire some of the uh, anti-personnel type rounds that I spoke about that would have been used in the time period. The very first type that we're going to fire is just a single solid projectile, 70 caliber. Uh, these outdated, well outdated by modern aspects, latest and greatest of the time period, fired a uh, bullet that was very, very slow moving and obviously very large by today's standards so when they hit they hit like you'd been shot with a brick they tended to flatten and would cause devastating wounds so to hopefully demonstrate that out here in the woods not terribly far because I don't want to miss I have a section of uh, deer femur bones I came across the old skeleton of a deer in the woods so we're gonna see what kind of an effect the uh, 70 caliber round ball would have on actual bone if it were to be hit. Hopefully we get some good results. And just a little bit more on the New England Fowler. Uh, again, this particular one that we just finished this up, and this is one of Jim Chambers' New England Fowler kits. Uh, styling on it dates from 1740, 1760, so this is indeed one that could have been used in the time period of the American Revolution. New England Fowlers carried a mix of French and English influence typically. Uh, calibers ranged from 60 to 80 on them and barrel lengths were typically 38 to 50 and they varied quite a bit. But uh, again, common gun as a civilian hunting weapon and a large number of these I'm sure would have been present that fateful morning. So so some up close, up close, excuse me, shots of the gun. We'll show some more later. Flip it around for you. and uh, go through the loading motions at this time. Uh, paper cartridges very much would have been used with this particular gun however the round balls that I have are slightly oversized for paper cartridges it makes too tight of a fit so I'm just going to charge with paper and then go ahead and put the uh, ball down. So paper cartridge 70 grains of 3F Use the paper wadding, ram that down. Yep, gotta ram my ball down. 70 caliber round ball.
and I'll put the rest of the paper in, even though that fit pretty good, paper wadding on top, just in case it would want to roll out. But that fit pretty good. I don't think it's likely to happen. A little bit of priming. And uh, I'll spin the camera around here for the actual shot, but we'll go ahead and take aim. Okay, so that completely annihilated several of the bones. They're blown to pieces. And there's uh, shards all over the place. And this is a pretty heavy uh, elm log, and it just about knocked it over. So, yeah, uh, would uh, hit like a brick. And that slow moving wide projectile would just completely blow bones apart. So, it would have made some very nasty wounds. Okay, so for this shot I've got a load of buck and ball, so a solid 70 caliber projectile and three buckshot. Uh, popular around the 18th century, again very devastating. I'm going to take this shot at a, uh, I think I'm going to go for the uh, water jug again because everything that I shot with the uh, single load of buckshot, it hit it high so there's still some water in it. I'll see if I can uh, drain the rest of that water out of there. Pretty much blew it into uh, about a dozen pieces, so nasty round to get hit by. So for this last round, I'm just going to go ahead and fire a single projectile uh, offhand. I haven't shot this musket or Fowler offhand just to see what it's like. I don't know if I'll do any good on what I'm aiming at, but I'll give it a shot. Well, 35 yards, I actually hit the bullseye, so better than I thought I would. Alright, so for my final shot here, I'm going to pretend I'm uh, along Battle Road in Massachusetts. The uh, British Bulldogs are still advancing, trying to get back to Boston, taking cover in a little grove of trees behind this little stump here, although it wouldn't offer much protection. And I'm uh, going to take one more shot at the enemy before I'm out of ammunition and have to retire from the fight. Okay, there's an officer approaching on horseback, so I'm going to try for him. Well, I scared him. I didn't quite hit him, but I scared him. He'll think twice before he comes this way again. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate everybody's support. Please subscribe. That helps us out a lot. And uh, all that means is you'll get notifications when the new videos come out. So until next time, thanks so much again, and take care.